Hi everybody and welcome. I am Tiffany with Voices for Independence Fitness and Activities and I am here to share an art idea with you. Uh, today I'm going to have a painting project that is for beginners. Uh, it may seem intimidating but it's really quite simple for you to create this beautiful, well, the actual picture is beautiful. I attempted to recreate it uh, in painting and I am going to show you the easy step-by-step -step technique so you can recreate it as well. Uh, today's project, all you need is a piece of cardstock or a canvas. You can get these at the Dollar Tree or the dollar stores out there or you can buy them in bulk online. You can also just use a piece of cardboard or a regular piece of sturdy white paper, whatever you have available. I also have some acrylic paints. I just picked out some colors that I thought would be nice. I'll share the original picture with you in the comments below, but we are going to be using some red and pinks. These are simulating roses. I have some green for the uh, greenery and leaves around the outside and then some blues to simulate the water and maybe make a tabletop or a desktop that your flowers are sitting on. So that's all you need to get started. You'll want a pencil because I do like to sketch out my ideas prior to painting them. But if you are an avid artist, uh, you can go right ahead and start painting your picture as well. But I'm going to help you lay out the design in pencil and then we'll start painting it and I'll show you some simple techniques to get a uh, look of a professional. So what you'll want to do, you'll have your uh, piece of paper or your canvas and then in pencil. And since we are using acrylic paint today, acrylic is a heavier paint. It's not a watercolor, which is more uh, water-based. So it's a softer look. So the acrylic paint will definitely cover up your pencil lines. I myself am going to go a little darker with my pencil lines just so you're able to see them. But I would recommend just doing a light sketch on your uh, canvas for your own instruction and just so you have an idea where you want to lay your color down. Um, as I'm drawing, if I feel that the pencil is really not showing up for you folks viewing this today, I have one already with the pencil drawing on it and I'll just share that and we can start our painting as well. So you'll want to lay out your flowers. These flowers are just a simple circle design and as you can see on this one I have about seven circles. In art they tend to say using odd numbers is more pleasing to the eye so if you want to do flowers or a bunch of flowers like this, a bouquet, I would recommend doing three, five, or seven. Uh, we're going to try and recreate this with the seven flowers. So, and again, I'm drawing um, upside down and backwards. So I'm going to attempt to do this. And if it's not working out, folks, I do have the pencil drawing to share with you. So I like to start at the top just so I can uh, estimate where I want my flowers to go, making sure you leave room at the bottom of your canvas to include the vase and uh, a low-level landscape line. We always want our objects sitting on something to give the eye a point of view. So I'm just going to start a circle right up here. And again, I have a smaller canvas, so I have to be aware of my sizing. But if you have a large canvas, you can adjust your circles to whatever size you want. These are going to be our flowers. So I'm going to place one there. And again, you can make your flowers different sizes. We're going to be painting over them so we can adjust the size and the shape a little bit. This is just a rough sketch of where we want things to go. So I think with the size I'm going right now, I might just do um, a few more flowers. I might just add a little one up here to kind of center my picture better. And then we have five, so I'm going to add one more here. And then I'm going to add one towards the bottom of my picture. They have, to, they do not have to be in any particular um, order or placement on your canvas. It's just wherever you feel. I, like I already changed my mind. Instead of going down here, I'm going to put a smaller one over to the side. Again, I'm working in odd numbers in art. It's a little more pleasing to the eye to have things in odd numbers. And then I am just going to make a vase at the bottom. I know it looks like nothing much, but we will be creating it into this painting here. Now this one you can see that we have um, a vase and I kind of created it to look 
almost like it was sitting in a jar of some sort or an old uh, milk bottle or soda bottle. So, but in this one, I might create a different shaped vase. So I'm really just gonna go down and see where I want my vase to sit. And then I'll probably have it come to here. And then to make it more realistic, you want to have a little, instead of going straight across, you want a little bit of a downward curved line to simulate the shape, a cylindrical shape that a vase or jar would be. All right, so we have our vase. And then we're gonna make a very light line similar to, similar to our bottom line, that downward curve, almost like a smile to simulate water. And we're gonna make it so it looks like there's depth to make our bottle or vase look three-dimensional. So I am going to add another line across the top to simulate um, that there's water in the bottom of our vase. I'm just gonna sketch some quick lines down. These will be our stems. Again, this is just a sketch for our painting that we're gonna be making. All right, so there is our sketch for our floral painting. And again, we're doing this picture right here. So what we really wanna do now is find a brush that will work well for each part of the painting. So for the background, what I did, I'm not gonna do it on this one just because it needs to dry a little bit, but I did a very light tan or yellow wash on the background of this. So I took a color and I really got a lot of water on my brush and wet down that color really well. And I dry brushed, the, I'm not dry brush, I brushed over the whole painting with a, uh, a really diluted color. That means I had a lot of water in it and it was pretty wet. That way you can have a background color, but you'll still be able to see your pencil lines. All right, so again, I did it on my sample. I'm not gonna do it here in the demonstration just because I want my canvas to dry. You'd want that background color to dry before we went ahead and did our flowers or else everything would uh, smear into each other. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want all our colors to blend into one messy, uh, picture. All right, so now to do the flowers, what you're going to want to do uh, for the flowers, I typically I uh, get my brush wet in the water. I put my brush in a little bit of water and then I uh, kind of tamp it off on my towel or a paper towel. I always have a paper towel by me when I'm painting just to dry my brush off a little bit because with this acrylic paint, I really don't want my colors to be watered down. I want them kind of heavy and I really want a dark, bold look, and I want my colors to stay in place. I don't want them to run uh, into each other. I want them to stay where they are, so I'm using less water and more color. So to get started, I'm just getting some of that deep magenta pink on my brush, and I am going to start going around the circle. Again, you don't want it to look dry, uh, so you might need a little more paint or water. And I'm just doing a light spiral. Just like that, it's fading to the center. Then you can either rinse your brush off or sometimes I like to immediately go into my next color with that previous color on my brush because I feel it helps blend my flower colors together better. Then I went ahead and added a little bit of red and then I'm gonna go with some of that dark purple blue right in the center. And you can bring it out a little bit and brush it around the edge as well to add some depth and color. I'm also gonna grab some of that a light cream color I have because we wanna add some highlights on our flower as well. And we're gonna go around it just like that. It's simple and easy. If you feel like your colors are not working the way you want, you can actually do it in the reverse order. You can start in the center if you feel more comfortable that way. I kind of put some of the dark magenta uh, dark blue more so midnight blue in the center and then I'm gonna pick up some of that magenta now and I'm gonna start swirling around the outside in different areas and then I need a little more of that magenta I think and we're gonna go around there and they're gonna pick up some of that red we can place some of that red on there these are more like roses that roses would look like we're doing the spiral design and pick up some of that light cream or white again because you really want to add some highlights on your flower and it adds depth and dimension when you add those colors so what i'm going to do now is show you when you get um 
a little farther along what we can do. So I'm gonna just do one more flower over on the side here and then I'm gonna show you how to do some of your greenery. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start in my center again and we'll just do these two really quick over here on this side. We're just gonna work on this side of the painting for now so we can uh, show you all the steps. So I'm gonna get some of that magenta, put that around and go right into my red. You want really bold colors in these flowers. And again, you're just painting in like a circular spiral motion. And it doesn't have to be the complete circle. You can have hit different spots in the circle with your brush and then go back and pick up that other color and really work that in there. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do now to add your greenery in, I'm going to take um, a brush that's a little bit more rounded at the tip this will give me the ability to make thinner lines. And again, you can uh, hand draw your greenery in, or you can freehand it where I'm just going to kind of make like a leaf design here. I'm gonna come out between the flowers, get my brush a little more wet, I feel it's a little dry. And we're gonna bring some greenery out and around into a leaf shape. You can fill that in then with your paintbrush and then you can add some depth and dimension to your leaf by adding some other greens and even some yellows in there to really make it pop off the canvas. So we're gonna add some of our yellow on there. We'll add it on the outside and it really gives a nice color and texture to your greenery as well. As you're working around your painting, you'll want to uh, fill in all your spots just so it looks like one co cohesive picture with the greenery. And then you're just gonna take it down and do your light wash on your vase down there to get that water colored look so it looks like there's water that those beautiful stems are sitting in. And that is really all you need to do to create your own beautiful bouquet of flowers. Who needs a delivery when you have paints at your house? I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know. I will be attaching the photo and the tips on how to recreate it in your own home in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for joining me.